I have remade the collar drafting part of the jacket drafting video, so maybe go back and check that you've got the right one. For the new one, I drew the inlay on in the video. With Melton, we need to find the bias. Line up the line that extended from the brake line up to the bias of the Melton, or alternatively, the centre back of the collar should be lined up to the bias. Trace around it and cut it out. Copy the brake line onto both pieces of Melton. Should you wish, mark on the end of the fall, 4cm above the brake line, to back tack there when machining. Machine the two pieces together with a 1cm seam allowance, back tacking on both ends, and back tacking the fall as well if you want it. Fold it open and press the seam open. Lay the melton seam side down onto the bias of the collar canvas and make sure that it is laying flat against it. Baste it in place to keep it flat for machining. If you have a large sheet of collar canvas, then maybe trim it flush with the melton now. Stitch along the brake line without back tacking, and really you could iron the shape in the collar and use it for a fitting without padding it at this point. But only in a pinch. Or if you're a discount tailor. Or a super express tailor. Trim all the excess, if not already. Before padding the lapel, chalk on the inlays, because it's simply unnecessary to pad the inlay, given it's likely just going to be chopped off. And then also don't pad an additional centimetre from the inlay across the top as we're going to fold the collar material behind it. That said, I'm pretty sure the Germans pad the whole thing, and I kind of like the way that looks, to be honest. But this is simpler and faster. Start padding on the brake line, with the collar mostly flat. We're catching as little as possible of the melton, in a similar sense to padding the lapel. It's going to be folded away, but it's still going to be exposed in a similar way to the lapel. In the same vein, you want to use the same colour of thread as the melton again. After the first flat line, fold the pad and pad the stand or the fall. Having finished which, pad either the fall or the stand. There'll be an unlisted and mostly uncut version linked in the description. Stitches can be relatively spaced out and long. You might only make three rows on the stand. Upon completion of each side, they are very exaggerated in how they hold their shape, how it's curved. Take the basting out at this point. To iron, fold it and press it along the brake line first. Make sure it's flat there. Because it's folded along the bias, we can and will easily steam and stretch the under collar. For the moment, I suggest just stretching it around as much as possible, but later on we'll get to how the gorge line and being double-breasted or single-breasted can impact how curved you want it. Begin by measuring your armhole. Measure around the inlay and seam allowances as appropriate. Then, with your cut-out sleeve patterns, Measure those 1cm from the edges and inlay, making sure that you remember the seam allowances on the edges of the sleeve. You want the sleeve measurements to be around 10% larger than the armhole. If it isn't, then you can use the inlay you gave the undersleeve to move the line, increasing or decreasing it as appropriate. Having decided it's correct, Baste and machine the two parts of the sleeve together, along the short seam.
to iron the seam open, lay the under sleeve flat, and the top sleeve will rumple and stuff. Just iron the seam open like that. Here, you could cut a piece of fusing to put where the cuff button holes are going to be, from the hem to above the vent, around 5cm wide. On the right side of the top sleeve, chalk on the seams, 1cm in from the mark stitches, then along the mark stitches of the cuff. Lay the top sleeve up to the bottom sleeve, aligning the mark stitches, and mark the bottom of the cuff slightly higher on the undersleeve. Then on the undersleeve you need to chalk on the seam allowances, then chalk up to around 4cm beyond it for the inlay of the cuff, which is what will go under the top sleeve and hold the buttons. Just make sure that you think through that last bit, it seems like a common thing to overlook. Lay the bottom of the sleeve onto some silesia on the bias. Trace either side a little above the hem and above the top of the cuff. Cut it out. Make sure that the cuff of the sleeve is flat, wrong side up, and lay the silesia onto the sleeve as you cut it. Lay something under the seam allowance of the sleeve, and either base to machine it, do a permanent base, or hand stitch it. Then, base the silesia in place along the top, and you can permanently stitch it to the hem inlay. Make sure that it's flat and doesn't pull anything. Iron the top sleeve along the seam line, and iron the undersleeve along the line that you chalked for the button inlay. Iron the hem inlay up. Check that the inlays are in the right place by lining the back sleeve up to the undersleeve and fold the undersleeve over. Make sure that you can still see the inlay on the top sleeve. On the top sleeve, you should trim away a small amount of the inlay at the top, fold it in a triangle, and press it in place. Baste it there, like the hem, shaping it to point inwards. Baste it along the top and move the other side of the sleeve inwards a bit to prevent it from showing.
begin to fell the triangle before prick stitching a half moon shape around where the button and buttonhole is going to be in order to allow a button and buttonhole to be there. Then proceed to fell it to the end. Then fill the other side in place, still shaping it slightly, pushing it inwards, stopping it from showing. Cross stitch the hem up to the sleeve. Remove the basting at this point and you could press it again, as it'll be difficult to do it later. Begin to base the two together from the top, lining the top sleeve up to the inlay, and mark the top of the vent onto the inside of the inlay on the top sleeve. Make sure that the seams and thread marks are lined up around the vent. When you get to just past the top of the vent, Move the needle to the top side, secure it, and then baste along the edge of the inside of the cuff to the undersleeve. Stick a pin holding the inlays together, and when you start machining, back tack horizontally into the inlay at the top of the vent and machine with a 1cm seam allowance up to the top. Press the seam flat. Stretch the inlay a little bit, just above where the vent finishes, and press it open on a sleeve board. However, the inlay around the vent needs to twist, so gradually twist it to a little below the elbow and make sure that it is properly flattened. Double check that the chalking on the sleeve lining, denoting the inlay, is still present. And also mark a point above where the top of the vent is going to be. At least a few centimetres, but realistically not too much, because you're going to need to fill it later. Join the shorter seam with pins, and then a 1cm seam allowance. Then line the top sleeve up to the inlay, and machine down to the bit above the top of the vent.
press the seam flat, and then press the seam over to one side, either with a sleeve board or by folding it over. Don't split the seam allowances on lining because that'll make it weaker. To attach the lining to the jacket, lay the lining down with the undersleeve up, and lay the sleeve atop that undersleeve down, or vice versa. Lay them together with the crown of the lining 2cm above the crown of the sleeve, you know, as we cut it, and baste the seam allowances together, starting 10cm from the top of the seam allowance. Keep the bastes loose, but, but tack every stitch. Start with the short seam to the top of the sleeve, then use a pin to keep the lining centered on the cuff. Do the same for the hindarm seam allowances, except no pin. Just stop a little above the vent. Fold the lining inlay of the undersleeve inwards, and baste it to the undersleeve inlay. Not all the way down though, as we'll need to turn the hem up. Turn the sleeve out by sticking your hand through the lining and pulling the sleeve through like that. Remove the pin and reattach it to the same place on the outside. On the still loose piece of lining inlay, mark the top of the vent. Cut into it, ideally at an angle from the hem, and fold the lining inwards. At the folds, baste it in place to the lining, and then to the top sleeve, not all the way down. Fold the lining up and baste it around the edge. Then turn it through. You can then remark the inlay on the armhole. You can do a running stitch on the inlay so that it's easier to see from both sides when joining it to your jacket.